and I was standing six feet from him, observing extremely carefully. He was not doing any sleight of hand or anything. He took a glass off the table that my wife was drinking from, and he proceeded to eat that thing and chew it up with me watching the glass in his mouth on his tongue. Mm -hmm. He was never cut, nor was there any blood. And mm -hmm. to this day, I don't know how that works. Okay, on February 10th of Science this year, they had a two-page article on Joe Newman's uh, free energy motor, and I wonder if you knew him. He's down in your area. Yes. Uh, in fact, uh, during the last few months, I've been exerting a great amount of energy and all the money I could afford to spend to send tapes of that interview to everybody that had any power to influence that court decision, that court case he's got coming up. I've been sending tapes to, uh, you know, a couple of congressmen, to some pretty powerful people that have a lot of influence and things like this all over the country, trying to get some help brought to bear, some pressure brought to bear when, he's, is, uh, when his suit comes up in June against the... Uh, uh, patent office uh, and trying to get his patent. Mm -hmm. And it is working, Tom. Yes, it is. He's got three working models down there. That's great. I have your part four of your book, but there, there's no glossary of terms, and it's still quite difficult to understand the terminology and, and uh, the scalar wave part. I don't have any little test for that to understand that intuitively for myself. Yes, I'm working on a glossary, by the way, for the new edition of the Excalibur briefing. If I can ever get it in, get it out, which I uh, should get it in pretty quick, and it'll be out about August. Uh, and I will have a glossary in the Excalibur briefing. Okay, well, thank you very much. I'll let someone else get on now. Okay, Craig, thank you very much for your call. Uh, Craig, obviously, is a bright young man, Tom. He uh, challenges us all the time. Yeah, Barbara just right. stepped in here. Yeah. Barbara. Fascinating show. What happened to our winter this year? Well, ask the Russians. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm enjoying I'm enjoying the uh, the early summer that I think started about the time that fall began last year. But I'm wondering what it's going to do to our crops and so on. Um, Who knows? I don't know. I don't know. Well, I'll listen to the program. The next 15 minutes, you may solve that problem too. Well, I am going to be talking about um, some slightly different subjects. I think I think you know both of my guests tonight. Sandy Gooch, the owner of Mrs. Gooch's Natural Food Emporium going to be in studio to tell us what we should be eating and what we shouldn't. Actually, her own life story is an interesting interesting story. Maybe she'll sh share some of that with us. I don't think she'll recommend eating a glass like... Uh... No, no. I think, well, actually, if it doesn't have sugar in it, it doesn't have processed flour, she might go for it. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. And then on our 2 o'clock hour, and I do know, you know, Bart Ellis has oh, yes, been a guest indeed. of yours, but he's going to be wearing a slightly different hat tonight. He is a mental health professional. And um, he's going to be talking about his feelings about warehousing the mentally ill, as he calls it, putting folks who are schizophrenic in hospitals, and he says that simply warehousing them. He claims he has a better method for training schizophrenics and other seriously mentally ill people that can get them mainstreamed back into regular life. So we're going to hear a bit from him. Well, Bart's a very, very bright guy, and I hope somebody pays attention to his thesis there. Yeah, well, I've enjoyed speaking with him on the phone about this. I have, yet, I have not met him in person yet, and I'm looking forward to that in the 2 o'clock hour. Okay. Thank you very much, Barbara. Barbara okay. Essenson. Be on right after uh, the news at midnight for a whole night of kind of fun stuff. Barbara has a very, very good show. Well, let's go on with our callers. Tom Bearden is on the line from Huntsville, Alabama with us. And uh, we have Carl wanting to know about the scale waves. Carl? Tom? I yes, Carl. I can, can barely hear you, but I'll go on. Uh, I've read considerable about uh, Nikola Tesla in the past few years. And uh, one of the measurements that he made was in a storm, uh, the wave action, the electric wave action that went around the Earth. And he, he measured the amount of time and everything. And uh, what I wanted to know was, uh, is this in the same basic uh, uh, ELF type of frequency ranges? Uh, no, Carl, it's not in the ELF, but uh, the, the point you bring up is very interesting. Storms do produce scalar waves. And uh, as a matter of fact, one of the things that produces ball lightning, uh, the mysterious phenomena that used to be a fraud and now is accepted and known to be real, uh, ball lightning, for example, is often produced because a cloud in the region and the ground, or two clouds, form a scalar interferometer, projecting scalar waves which, because of their randomness, form a sort of a circle. And you get a glowing ball of energy where the energy bottle is. And that's usually what produces uh, the ball lightning from the clouds. Now, what Tesla detected in the Colorado Springs and, and uh, caused a great deal of excitement when he realized what it was, he detected the waves from the storm, even though it was very far away, and he realized that what he was looking at was something extremely unusual. 
Uh, with his very agile mind, he immediately went from that uh, on into the things where he demonstrated from Colorado Springs the fact that he could transmit uh, a wave around the earth and form a standing wave. If he had succeeded in finishing the tower that he was building on Long Island, Wardenclyffe, he would have given the world free energy with such a standing wave. Huh. However, Wall Street did not like the idea. Uh, they figured, which is normal. <laughs> they figured energy was something to sell and something to tax. And uh, so that ended that. All right, I have two things I would like to find. One, one there, in the last oh, week or ten days, there was that cloud formation over the northwest San Fernando Valley and uh, in the Santa Susana Mountain Pass here. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other thing is that... Uh, uh, Will all these books and stuff be available up there at the Tesla Book Company, the paperwork and stuff? Uh, the electromagnetic series that I've been writing is available there now. Uh, the earlier paper that I produced on the Soviet Tesla weapons is available there. Uh, I have a videotape that's available for me at the post office box that I gave on the Tesla weapons. And the paper that I, when I can finish this thing on weather control, it will be available from John Ratzlaff at the Tesla Book Company. Okay. And I recommend giving him a call. That address again is what, 1580 Magnolia? Yes, and that's Millbrae, California. Instead of your normal magnetic wave, and you understand the scalar wave was two opposed waves, the exact frequency, 180 out. Now, as you know, when you build a wave, you'll actually get a narrow bandwidth. And so you won't have just a single sine wave. What you should do with that thing is run it through a Faraday cage. The scalar comes out, the other stuff stays, the hash stays in. Uh, if you build a scalar wave and you find a resonance in that material anywhere, that material acts as a capacitor for the scalar wave. And you can charge the very atoms of the material itself up with this. This is an effect that Tesla noted also in an obscure paper. And... Uh, you can get the mass and inertia of the object to change when you put a lot of charge, a lot of scalar charge into it that way. Okay, Tom. Well, keep up the work, and we'll try to do something down here. Okay, right. and, and Bill won. <laughs> Bill won. Let us know about it. Okay, I will. Thank you, Carl. Night. Night. Dave, you're on. Hi, Tom. How you doing? Okay, fine. Yeah, uh, I read a book a couple years ago called The Cosmic Conspiracy. Um, I don't remember very much about it, but I remember it was dealing with Tesla and the work that he had done and uh, the work that the Russians and the Americans had done from, you know, Tesla's uh, originally w original work. It uh, got into the VLF stations in Antarctica. Are these the same as the scalar waves? Well, the ELF that we detect is a normal kind of wave mm -hmm. because we're using normal detectors. Uh -huh. It's been my thesis for some time that, you know, hidden from the normal detectors is the scalar components, and that's what's doing the real dirty work. Mm -hmm. But but are there actually these stations in Antarctica? I don't know about Antarctica. Uh -huh. stations. It, it also got into uh, a project, Noah's Ark. Have you heard of that? No. That was supposedly put together back in 78 or 79, uh, under the guise of uh, uh, some presidential protection thing, and, and people were raising questions that uh, this was dealing with these scalar or ELF waves on, you know, being able to control the weather in various areas of the world. But uh, I'm not I'm not familiar with the book. Uh... It it was uh, put out by an Australian publisher, and uh, it'd be pretty hard to get. But uh, I uh, I'd love a copy of it. Yeah, yeah uh, in fact, the maybe if, if I can get a hold of this, uh, you know, I'll, I'll uh, write Tom. Okay, very good idea. Okay. All right, you. Dave, thank you very much. Bye-bye. And uh, are, you, are you way up there in San Francisco area uh, again? Yeah, we're both right. Um, well, first first of all, I don't want to be melodramatic, but I'm sure you know what happened to uh, Wilhelm Reich since you mentioned him before. Um, yes. Uh, I'm sure nothing like that will happen to you, but do you, do you sus suspect that uh, at some point the government may step in and try to kind of squelch uh, the kind of publicity you're bringing to this uh, area of research? I don't expect uh, any particular trouble from the government because, you know, so far they haven't really believed it, except in obscure places. What I'm saying is when they start to believe it. When they start to believe it I'll be and start to do something about it, I'll be very happy to shut up and, uh, and let them do their job. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, another question. Uh, we know that uh, you know different.